Okay, well, welcome everybody to the first session after lunch. My name's Ken Titmus, and we're going to be talking about developing an internal demand-driven materials requirements planning maturity matrix. Let me just share my slides, hopefully. Okay, can you see my slide there, Connor? Hello? Yes, Kenya. It's up. It's up. Okay, fine. Thank you. All right. So we're going to be talking about implementing the DMRP in Africa. Um, I was involved in a project with Coca-Cola Beverages Africa uh, about a year or so ago, implementing the DMRP uh, in ultimately nine countries. I have with me this afternoon. Um, uh, I have with me this afternoon uh, two of the people that were involved in that implementation, and uh, we've got uh, Josephine from uh, CCBA in Uganda, and I've got Leo from uh, CCBA in Mozambique, and uh, they're going to be talking after me. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the generic implementation process. How how easy or how difficult is it to get into a DDMLP implementation? Josephine's going to talk a little bit about her implementation in um, Uganda and some of the challenges that they had. And then Leo's going to take over and start talking about uh, the next level. They've started to put a maturity um, um, matrix together for CCBA. Um, not all the countries are, are at the same level at this moment in time. So let me just have a look at the uh, generic um, implementation. The, the implementation we did with Coca-Cola in Africa, currently there's nine countries that have gone uh, with, with DDMLP. And in those nine countries, there are somewhere in the region of about 90 manufacturing and distribution sites across the continent. There are about 40 planners that are using the system to plan materials in the DDMLP system. And in total, there are about 10,000 SKUs in the system and about 7,000 bills of materials. Now the whole system sits in one instant uh, within a cloud-based uh, uh, software and it, it means that anybody in the system can really look at what's happening across the continent. It means that somebody at a high level could be looking at all the countries that have implemented. They could be looking at a single country or you could be looking at a single entity like a manufacturing plant or a distribution center. So it means that anybody and everybody has got access, if you've given them access, to have a look what's happening. The beauty of this is also that uh, those people that are implementing, because it's cloud-based, we don't actually have to go to the site. We can see exactly what the site sees as well. So let's just go back a little bit and talk about how easy is it to get started? Well, many of you may have attended a few presentations, and I've done quite a few myself on an intro to DDMLP. And you may have attended some of these presentations, and it may have awakened some interest in you on the subject. What I would suggest you do is go to the Demand Driven Institute website. That's demanddriveninstitute.com. And there you will find many, many uh, case studies, and there's a huge amount of information on there about the DDMLP process. And once you, uh, once you have some curiosity and some questions, you might wonder how this system might work for you. Well, if you have some interest, you can always contact us. And one of the things I do quite a lot of is introducing a company to the methodology uh, using an introduction. So what I like to do is to do in, within your company, get the management team together. And we can give them a free one and a half hour intro to the demand-driven 
uh, process. And we can have some discussions as to how it might work for you. Once we've done that, if you need a little bit more information, then what I would suggest you do is get your core planning team together. These are the people that are doing procurement, uh, shop floor planning or distribution planning, people involved in inventory management or materials, uh, warehousing, for example. Get them together and we can also give you a free three hour basic training workshop where we go into a little bit more detail than you'll get in the introduction, but you'll get a, a far better understanding of the five components of BDMLP. Other things we can do is to take some of your past demand data. So maybe just take one of your uh, warehouses, for example, get the past demand data for the last year, and we can put that into a simulator. And we can simulate how the buffers would have reacted last year based on your actual demand data. And we can see what benefits that you might get from putting in a DDMLP implementation. As far as right sizing your inventory, uh, most cases people have too much inventory. And so we find we get an inventory reduction. But I think the key of DDMLP is improving customer service and then right sizing your inventory. Once you've done that and you can see some opportunities, you might say, well, let's start looking at putting an implementation plan together. And quite honestly, in a medium-sized company, this is not like putting in uh, an ELP system. We can do this fairly quickly. And just to give you an idea, with Coca-Cola, we spent a few days with them uh, the, globally, the people from the various countries, this is when we could travel, came into South Africa, and we had a week uh, of going through some education, going through looking at uh, how we can put the model together. Once we'd done that, we then started looking at the various countries, and it was actually um, um, Namibia we started with. And we went there and spent about three, I think three or four days in Namibia, looking at a model for them, looking at what the requirements were going to be as far as data was concerned. We then left them for a couple of weeks and then came back and did the implementation. And in all, that took about a month. And in all, we were doing about one country a month. So once we finished Namibia, we moved into Uganda and we did Uganda. And then we did uh, Mozambique. By the time we'd finished the three countries, the internal implementation team had sufficient knowledge and understanding of how to go and do this on their own. And we didn't really get too involved at the end of the day. So they went off and implemented in the other six countries. So normally I say to people, it's gonna take you about three months probably. But the first thing we need to do is to get the people educated. And the Demand Driven Institute has a Demand Driven Planner course, which we can use. And we can then put uh, a, a, a project plan together over that three months. We also have another course, which is called the, the BDMLP Implementation Support. This is not as in depth as the Demand Driven Planner, but it does give people within the organization some understanding of how things are gonna change in the business. And then of course, we need to do some software training and some implementation. So what are some of the requirements that are needed? Yes, we need data to be able to run DDMLP. We need your parts. We need to understand your parts per location. We need to understand, if possible, your past demand data, because we can use that to use the smart buffer profiler to try and determine what are the best buff buffer profiles for a particular item at a particular location. And then on a daily basis, we need to understand what the current inventories are, what the current demand and the current supply is on each buffer. And we pull those in, it does the calculations, the net flow calculations and determines what needs to be uh, replenished and what needs to be bought and what needs to be made. 
We also need your bills and routings because uh, there's another methodology that we have as well, which is demand-driven sales and operations planning. And we can uh, look into the future using your forecast. So a proposed implement implementation budget is not that expensive either. Demand-driven education we put, need to put in place. We need to uh, get some software. Most software is cloud-based, subscription-based. And it's based on the value of the inventory which you're going to be managing, not necessarily how many users you've got or how many sites you've got. And then there'll be a little bit of consulting and education. And that's not a great deal. I reckon 100 hours or less, as far as that is concerned, will probably satisfy most medium-sized companies. If you're still not sure, um, we do have a flow simulation game, and this is going to be happening in about a month's time, and it's sponsored by Demand Driven Technologies. Uh, many of you may have played the MIT beer game, which demonstrates the bullwhip effect. So what we do is in the first round, we, we demonstrate this bullwhip effect, and in the second round, we then put buffers between these entities, and we can see how it mitigates the bullwhip effect in the supply chain and uh, how it could benefit your particular supply chain. There will be some more information about this later on, but there's only 36 spaces available. And if you want to register for this, then I suggest you go to the SAPEX um, website, uh, uh, sapex.org slash events, and it's on Wednesday, the 22nd of September. So you can register there. So now you're ready for your no-go or go uh, decision. Most people decide to go, I would say. And then what we can do is have regular support. And this is one of the things we've done with Coca-Cola over the last few months, or last few years, in fact, is that on a regular basis, on a Wednesday, we always have a meeting. Anybody in the country in Coca-Cola can come onto that meeting and we can support them they can ask questions, uh, if they have queries, it means that we can actually go and look at their data uh, on the cloud-based site, and a lot of problems can result, be resolved uh, in that way. We've also started using this now to try and put in some improvement into the system that they are using and giving more education and training. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, DDMOP and particularly uh, the demand-driven technologies, if you uh, tune in on Thursday at the conference at uh, 210, you can listen to Eric Bush. Eric is the CEO of Demand-Driven Technologies. He's going to be talking about demand-driven sales and operations planning. And then more importantly, after that, we've got Carol Patak and Dick Ling, who are going to be talking about the adaptive SNOP process, which is the strategic process of a demand-driven adaptive enterprise. So those are two sessions that you shouldn't really, you shouldn't really miss. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, Josephine, are you ready to take over? I'll share mine. Okay. Can I able to see uh, my screen? Yes, uh, I think we can. Yes, we can. Yes. All right. Uh, thanks, Ken, uh, for that uh, for that phase of presentation and uh, greetings to you all. I'll take us through the challenges of implementation, uh, particularly in Uganda and how we overcame these uh, challenges. Our implementation process was our first one. Uh, this took us about five days to accomplish. Uh, we started uh, with the full master data review uh, where we, like Ken uh, explained before, we mapped all our materials. Uh, we have about four plants. 
So we mapped all those materials to our existing ERP system, which is SAP in this case. And then we went on to upload uh, this master data into our DDMRP system uh, that captured uh, initial buffer profile configurations um, that would uh, be the buy the distributor and make items uh, for our manufacturing process. And then finally, uh, that took us to uh, our planning priorities focus, where as planners, we are focused uh, to look at the critical and high alert items uh, for execution uh, with our daily order recommendations uh, coming through our DDMRP system. Looks like a simple, straightforward process, but uh, this brought um, a few challenges uh, that we will see uh, in our next slide and uh, how we overcame uh, them. So uh, moving on, pretty much um, the challenges were evolving around uh, stabilizing our data because it was our key component into a DDMRP. With the historical data horizon uh, capped at 12 weeks that we were initially working with, we realized that we had to stretch this beyond the 12 weeks uh, in order to capture history of uh, infrequently used items um, such that we could also uh, map these and also create uh, buffer profiles for them. Then we had also uh, the, the data uploads and reloads uh, followed by the cleanup. Because as you review the process, you upload data and then you review accuracy of that data in terms of, um, in terms of order cycle, in terms of lead time, in terms of minimum order quantities, order multiples as well uh, in regards to the different uh, raw materials that we are working with as well as finished products for the four plants uh, that we were implementing this tool uh, for. Um, we also uh, encountered an issue to do with the forecasted uh, daily usage being uh, different from the actual usage that was actually happening. Uh, the tool challenged us um, on the assumption because initially um, with the planning that we had, we thought we were uh, on, 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 the, on a good track, but we realized that with the DDMRP uh, tool, the inventories actually that we were keeping were much more than uh, what is recommended uh, based on the, on the buffer profiles that were allocated to those particular materials and that we had to rework to be able uh, to buffer those configurations specific to those materials uh, in terms of uh, their lead times. Uh, some of them would take about 75 days. Um, then others would be as short as uh, seven days uh, because of uh, internal supply replenishment in country for the materials that are uh, available locally. So we had to do all that to ensure that our expectation versus reality was actually coming close. Uh, then also uh, we encountered uh, issues to do with buffer allocations. Uh, because as you run through the materials through this system, uh, automatic buffer profiles are allocated to these materials. But we realized that some materials were actually left out and we had to manually create those buffer profiles for those materials uh, just to ensure that all of them are being captured at the same time. and. Uh, consistently reviewed uh, to, uh, to the accuracy that we needed uh, to move. Then in terms of, um, in terms of obsolete uh, materials, uh, we had uh, a number of them that uh, actually came through 
uh, the portfolio complexity that we had that is, with the infrequent usage of these materials and uh, uh, and the, the the when you track back backwards through the historic horizon you realize that this is probably uh, a material that has been used like once in two years then uh, we realized that we had to actually reassess whether we really needed this uh, this material uh, for the for the balance of year or going forward or we can actually uh, change it for another or swap it for another so those were the options uh, that uh, we're looking into then of course um, the data the data review and cleanup uh, is a consistent uh, repeat because actually um, since the supply chain is too uh, rapid and uh, there is a lot of variability we realize that this has to be a consistent and constant process uh, to ensure that uh, the master data is accurate uh, to give us the right information and the right order recommendations uh, that are required uh, to pull through. So move on to how um, we overcame these challenges. Uh, we mapped these to actually consistent and continuous uh, education. Um, one was taking meaning uh, talking the DDMRP lingo, uh, understanding the vocabulary involved, learning it, disseminating it, and actually be able to cascade it to um, the wider team uh, because we have the short flow uh, team that uh, supports the manufacturing and also the distribution team that supports um, the distribution of this product across these plants. Uh, we also uh, went into the willingness um, where we, we, we engage the different functions uh, into the benefits of what DDMRP uh, can, system can actually uh, bring to the table, the benefits, the high service levels of DDMRP, uh, as well as the inventory reductions of about 30 to 40 percent. Uh, that we that the team and the entire functions um, the entire functions across the business uh, bought into then also the logic uh, these are the interventions uh, in the buffer adjustments uh, this is really um, a support uh, function uh, and it is entirely to the plan activity controls where you find that uh, you have to run the advanced, uh, the advanced uh, planning module to be able to uh, see the order recommendations uh, that's for the high and critical items such that these uh, are followed up to execution to ensure uh, that there is no exposure in terms of um, out of stock on finished product and raw materials um as well as working capital uh to ensure that you're keeping optimum optimal inventory at any point in time then we went on to the ability uh that is building on the system resilience um that with the demonstrated elasticity during the COVID-19 uh, that gave us an option uh, of adjusting lead times uh, to ensure that uh, the lead times are, are actually cap captured in, in due time uh, for us to be able uh, to maintain our stock cover with no exposure and uh, for, continued, uh, for, con for continuity of the business without uh, interruption. So that is what um, we went through in overcoming all these challenges. Um, Moving on, we we'll look at uh, the results uh, that came through. Uh, that uh, dark uh, black line is our target inventory. 
Then uh, the purple line uh, that is running across is the on hand inventory that uh, we are holding. So for the last 12 months uh, of our finished goods, you realize that this is a buffer, a buffer trend for our DDMRP system. You realize that uh, we have been stable for the last eight months. As you see, the first about four months were unstable because uh, you see the inventory, uh, what the, the target inventory was higher than the own hand. Then you see as we go along, um, the target inventory came closer to the own hand and we are realizing stability at this point in time. So that has improved because of data quality and of course uh, buffer optimizations that are ongoing. So the cleanup has to, consist to consistently happen uh, for you to realize uh, accuracy in this system. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll now hand over to Leo to take us through the next phase. Thanks, Josephine. I'm just gonna share my screen now very quickly so we don't lose any time. Okay, uh, Connor, will you let me know if uh, all looks good? Yes, yeah, all good. Okay, okay, so, and then, so this is the next step for us. So we've had all these implementations in the, in the country and uh, they all started at different times. So obviously every country is sitting in a different place right now. And the question for us is really what happens next? Um, and I work personally in Mozambique, but um, the, the work that I'm presenting is the work that uh, we've done or we're doing actually on behalf of the whole of CCBA and the, it's also impacting all of the implementations. So really, what do we want? We wanna know where we stand, right? Every single country. And, and this is an internal thing. We need to understand where we stand so we can move together, right, and advance. So there's a few, a few reasons that, um, the big reasons that have taken us on this journey to come up with a maturity matrix, a maturity framework, whatever you want to call it, to not just benchmark, but then drive um, this, uh, drive our game plan, which is our big strategy um, within supply chain to advance uh, all the planning teams and then obviously impact supply chain as a whole in CCBA Africa. So number one, we want to know where we are, right? Um, and then that all has to align to the big, you know, sort of demand focused supply chain. Number two is we wanted to leverage on shared knowledge. So different countries had different um, sort of stages of their process or their progress post implementation. Some picked up uh, faster than others. Um, some develop, uh, you know, sort of experiences and, and that others didn't. And then we wanted to have this like sort of community-based sharing, which would allow us to, to, you know, sort of push each other and all the peer countries to move up together. And then obviously, finally, is, is exactly the whole point, which is um, progress. And this progress for us is internally would be using the DDMRP software that uh, Ken and his, uh, his company sort of uh, allowed us to, to implement is to make sure that we're running at the highest level operationally. So having a DDOM or a DD or a demand driven operating model, which is functioning at a hundred percent. And then second is aligning our maturity and our capability to ensure that we hit the first sort of big stage, which according to the demand driven Institute is called, um, you know, uh, so it's the tactical stage of it, which is called the a demand driven uh, sales and operational uh, planning process. So we've had SNOP in, in Coca-Cola for obviously for years. Um, but right now was, is probably the moment where we want every single country to get that extra bit of, um, of, uh, of advancement of, uh, you know, modernization of moving away from this supply chain instability and, uh, which was always driven by forecasting. And as we know, and if you have already experienced with DDMRP, You'll, you'll understand that um, DDMRP decouples you from that forecast and it gives you other inputs which allow for much greater 
uh, stability through the supply chain because your input signals become demand and not just forecast. And forecasts are always wrong, and we know this. Um, so as we designed the maturity and we built this from scratch, the point was to know how to do it. So we've come up with a simplistic approach. We've taken from the experience that we've had. And again, this work has started uh, a few months after uh, most of the countries had already been uh, implemented and uh, sort of running the DDMRP software. So we looked at um, a, a, just a simplistic structure. We thought about um, grouping it into dimensions. We took a few metrics of key few metrics of the most important um, aspects which we thought uh, would make us not just align with the demand driven institute requirements for, for a DDS and OP, but also align with the software we had and the maximum utilization of that software. Um, and obviously the maximum gain from it, right? Extracting that maximum gain. So as an example, we, we set these dimensions, we got metrics and they would come up to a maturity index. So a big number for each country, which puts it somewhere within uh, what we've designed to be a four stage approach, a four stage maturity um, approach. And we, we did it and, and looking at, at the few countries that we had, we realized there were common things among them. Um, and so the dimensions we decided to pick on uh, are the ones on the screen. We realized once, one, Josephine was talking a lot about the data quality and just making sure that data stability is there. And that has a lot to do with housekeeping and sort of a compliance within the DDMRP system. So that's a basic, um, and, and it takes, as Josephine says, it takes continuous and consistent work. So it's not something you do in one month and you're done because our dynamics in our supply chain um, and in the industry we're in are so are now so rapid, so uncertain, so volatile, you definitely need to have that uh, aspect very strong. And then second would be planner efficiency. So our planners, the people that operate the system on a daily basis, um, see how they are executing it. They have to execute it at a certain level. Um, we obviously realize that complexity management, so the portfolio complexity is something uh, very connected to, to, to DDMRP in general. I mean, we're talking inventory levels and we're talking working capital, but then we're also talking about materials that get left out, materials that are actually just um, putting in noise into the system and they're actually not as used as we expect them to be used. So there's an aspect of that and obviously an aspect of education, which is really about making sure that the more tactical and especially the more strategic uh, considerations are taken by not just the planners, but the managers of each country, so planning planning managers of each country, when they operate the system and when they use the system in their supply, uh, um, in their sales and operational planning processes. Um, and these are capabilities that are really what we want to achieve together with the operational aspects of it. Um, and that would take us to what we would assume to be a pretty advanced stage of maturity for ourselves. Um, and then just in general, these stages are pretty uh, just simplistically described. So stage one would be um, right after Ken comes in, um, he does the implementation. This is a whole setup. This is what Josephine was talking about in the beginning data, uh, that first initial data sort of um, work and, and stabilization. And then of course, there's a continuous uh, training and support. Then stage two, um, if a country scores around uh, Stage two would mean that they've already running the system. They've had some time running it. They've got the routines, okay, of the planners entrenched. Um, they're doing housekeeping pretty okay. And then they are already starting to understand concepts of, of buffer, um, you know, assessment, the buffer adjustments, how to influence the buffers or how to use them uh, to better have, you know, the, the, lowest, the lowest out of stock or, or the highest stock availability, okay? Stage three would be basically when we start moving up, um, advanced operations, we call it. And it's basically saying, okay, we know how to operate the system, but we also know how to use the system for a more advanced, more strategic, more longer horizon um, impact, okay? And this is where you start connecting, um, you know, our DDMRP model, our software into a whole sales and operational planning process. Okay. And then obviously stage four would be this 
um, where we achieve a variety of things in which you would have also strong stakeholder, strong senior stakeholder, um, you know, buy-in confidence level. Um, and you have a DDS and OP, which is a demand driven sales operational planning on in motion. Um, and, and a few other aspects. So you would have to be doing every single thing on the previous stages really well to be able to uh, also get to stage four. And then just to kind of get to the end of it, what, what, this all looks really nice, but the, the question is, um, <laughs> what are the challenges that we have with it? And, and it looks very nice on the slide and, and talking about it, but there are a few things that came up while we've been designing the model, while we've been kind of going through this journey. Um, and I like the, the sort of the metaphor of the iceberg because there's so much under the water that, that we don't expect or that majority of, of you know, um, companies don't really understand that's going to happen. So first is simplicity in the approach. So we needed to choose something simple. I mean, this is a world of so many complex, um, complex concepts and there's so much going on. We needed a, a maturity model or a way to assess it, to understand where we were. Um, simple, easy, um, and obviously validated and logical, but without complexity, you know, we would, we used a lot of the DDI, so the Demand Driven Institute uh, inputs we've used, our, our partners, which are, you know, the, the suppliers of our software, they've also given us a lot of, um, a lot of sort of input from their own experiences, working at their companies, just a general logic understanding of how maybe other um, organizations are doing. And that helped us design a simple approach. Obviously, the second challenge is the metrics or the KPIs, because all of these criteria that I've described in the previous slides in the dimensions that we used um, required to exist. They must be simply, um, you know, automatically expected from the system. You know, you don't want to have a maturity model that takes you uh, two weeks to. To, to sort of uh, assess and evaluate, right? And so what we've done is we've partnered up um, even stronger with our, with our supplier um, of, the, of the software, uh, of the system, and they have been developing continuously uh, everything that we need uh, to, to make sure that we get a, a maturity framework in place, um, easy and accessible. Setting realistic goals, pretty <laughs> key. Seems simple, but not really. Um, these things take time. And, and they take longer than six months. And, and the maturity that you expect from uh, within those stages that you, we've designed requires around about a year or 12 months of work, of properly focused work. And so we need to really very strongly put uh, every single expectation, um, you know, just, just be, be very honest with the stakeholders, be very honest with our in-country senior management teams and with, uh, with this Coca-Cola group which uh, um, that, that the process is actually a huge journey, um, which is really about transformation. Um, and this transformation comes from the fact that you need to build a lot of trust in the system. Um, this is not just a planning team thing. This is a whole organizational change. And so there's a lot of um, sort of uh, connection and, and strengthening of the concepts that you need to bring into the exposure of social uh, of senior um, stakeholders, senior management, um, and also expose the DDSNOP or the SNOP connection to demand-driven uh, planning. Okay, and then to finalize, what are we doing next? Um, in actual terms, we're now going to be soon running the maturity assessment. Okay, um, we're getting we're getting the model validated. My clock is already ticking, and together with the continuous education, right? Um, that we've, we've been doing, and we're going to start closing those gaps. We know where the countries are, what is missing, and eventually you're getting into the point where we're going to be, um, we want to be comfortable and say that all of our countries are running at the DDSNOP, highly 100% functional level, okay? And that would eventually take us to uh, another challenge and another road uh, roadmap, another journey, which would be eventually getting to an adaptive SNOP. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you for, for hearing us, our experiences, and uh, we're pretty much open to questions uh, that you might have. Uh, Leo and Josephine, thank you very much. Um,
we don't seem to have any questions. So either you've done a brilliant job or a lousy job, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but for anybody that's uh, still hanging in there and listening, if you go into the handouts, you will see that there is a handout there on the flow simulation game, which I spoke about earlier. So you can uh, download that, uh, that information. And as I said before, go to the SAPEX uh, website and go to events and you'll see uh, the flow game on there and you can register. And as I say, there is a limit. We've only, we're only going to have 36 people or only 36 people can, can join in on the game. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can see you there. Let me just check if there's any questions again. There don't seem to be any questions. Um, thank you very much for attending. Uh, the session has been recorded, so you'll be able to uh, listen to it again. And um, I believe you will be able to get the uh, copy of the slides as well. So, any last words, Leo, Josephine? I think, I think Ken, for anyone that's, that's listening or just kind of being um, sort of exposed to DDMRP, um, through us, um, it, it, it definitely is something you need to consider as you're going into this um, extremely volatile concept, uh, context that we're living in. Um, try it out. Also, um, understand that the solidification between the, 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 the provider or the supplier of your system um, is extremely key when you want to do continuous improvements. So if, if you choose um, something that just you just want to implement out of the box, it's, it's the wrong approach. You really need to consider a much more longer sort of journey together and you need to choose someone really strong to be able to, um, you know, flexible with, with, with proper support, a proper sort of technological advancement to be able to um, support you in the, in the journey that you will have because DDMRP is going to absolutely rock that boat. Um, and, and so you need really strong partners uh, next to you for that. Thanks, Leah. Josephine? I agree with you, Leo and Ken. Um, from from experience, uh, recently with the pandemic uh, offsetting uh, us, um, we realized that if we did have a strong uh, monitoring system uh, that actually works best best for us to have other recommendations uh, come through with no strain. Uh, it's really uh, a demonstrated support uh, in terms of uh, planning, replenishment, and of course, uh, managing the working capital. I would recommend uh, companies to consider this. Uh, the better part is that uh, our, the clients, our clients or um, our partners uh, consider a support system. This can be tailored actually to match um, your needs uh, for your particular uh, line of business. So I would really, really recommend that uh, you, you take on uh, DDMRP as part of uh, the system. Thank you. Thanks, Josephine. So if any of you want to know more, you can visit the Demand Driven Africa stand, exhibition stand, leave your card there or leave a message and we can get, uh, we can get back to you at some stage. So. Next session starts at 20 past and it's a keynote with uh, Daniel Stanton. So hopefully we'll see you around uh, in the lounges or on the exhibition stages sometimes. Thanks, Leo. Thanks, uh, Josephine. Uh, keep well, everybody. We'll see you at the next session.